so what is heathenry? Heathenry is Germanic polytheism. And Germanic polytheism is the worship of gods, ancestors, and spirits, the latter of which is sometimes known as Vatir or Wits or Whites. They go by a lot of names. <laughs> so what is heathenry, though? To put it really short and really blunt, it's an umbrella term for Germanic polytheists. So you have folks who use the term Norse heathen, meaning that they have a focus in the Norse culture for their sourcing, for the lore that is written in archaeological sources that inform us about our reconstruction of the old ways and the revival of the old ways. And then you have folks who take things from an Anglo-Saxon heathen perspective, who work with Anglo-Saxon resources from writing, archaeology. You get the picture. Okay, so what is polytheism? Broken down, polytheism is the belief and worship of many gods. Point blank, that's it. Polytheism as a term is a theological worldview. It doesn't actually tell you about the content too much, though. Because there's a big difference between Kemetic polytheists, heathen polytheists, and Hellenic polytheists. We each have our different understanding of the gods. We each have our different culture backgrounds. So, depending on where your polytheism comes out of, depends on the perspective you take, and it influences an entire range of choices. Now, you've got folks like myself who worship a lot of different gods from a lot of different cultures. And some folks bring that all together into one practice, and some don't. For myself, I worship each of the gods from the different culture backgrounds as close as I can to how they would have been worshipped. But I don't really know many languages that well, so most of my prayers are in English. And there are some folks who have gone the extra mile and they're learning the ancient language so they can make offerings, writings, inscriptions, so on and so forth in the original culture's language or as near as we can get to it. So there's a lot of different approaches to being a polytheist. And there's a lot of different approaches to being specifically a heathen. So saying anything too broadly kind of misses the point, which is why I put so much emphasis that I am coming out of a primarily Norse and Icelandic perspective. I cannot and will not speak for all heathens. I cannot and will not speak for all polytheists. It's simply impossible for me to do. So, what is animism? So animism, in my view, is wrapped up in polytheism. So polytheism is the belief in and worship of many gods. Animism is the belief that everything is or is potentially ensouled. That is, everything has a spirit. From the trees behind me, the ground beneath my feet, me, the cells of my body, this animism, as I understand it, extends to everything in the world and beyond it. So that the planet is seen as ensouled as much as I am. So, what do we do in heathenry? Well, we develop and maintain relationships with our gods, ancestors, and I'm going to use the Norse Icelandic term vetir, that is spirits. We maintain reciprocity, right relationship with these beings, with what I call the ginregen, the mighty powers, or the holy powers. So, how do we do that? Well, we are standing in what is called a they. V with an E with an accent above it. So a they is a sacred place. There's other words for it in other heathen denominations or culture groups. I'm not really going to go into that right now. <laughs> Long story short, this is a sacred place, and I do my worshiping here, and I also do it in the home. A really, really big point of similarity in most heathen and polytheist cultures in general is the understanding that there is hearth cultus. Hearth cultus is worship in the home. So that is everything from making offerings and prayers, from doing uh, spirit work, such as divination. Everything is done in the home. So that the very center of religious and spiritual life is lived in the home. So, within heathenry, there's a lot of different ways to do this. You might do it at an altar, 
You might do it outside in front of a pile of stones. In the Icelandic term, it's called a horgr. And the generic term for a sacred place is usually ve. So a ve can be anything from the altar in your house, even the horgr, to the grove that I'm standing in. And the Lanvatir were very kind enough to let me record here, so thank you again. So, how do we go about doing this thing we call heathenry? Well, the first steps are figuring out what culture group you're going to research. A lot of folks start off with Norse and Icelandic because they're the culture group we have the most material on. Other folks will intentionally go for one that's a little more niche and requires a little more digging and sometimes a bit more what's called in heathenry and other polytheisms, UPG, or unverified personal gnosis. We're going to dig into that a little deeper on another video, but what unverified personal gnosis is, is personal experiences, hierophany, that is divine experience, with God's ancestors or spirits, that informs your practice, but may not be reflected in lore or archaeology. If it's shared between multiple people, that's called shared personal gnosis. That is, if Jim has the experience that Freya likes strawberries, and Sarenth has the experience that Freya likes strawberries, and Johnny has the experience that Freya likes strawberries, and we all get together and say, hey, I think Freya likes strawberries, that's a shared personal gnosis. Um, I prefer to use just the term gnosis instead of unverified personal gnosis. It seems a bit redundant to me because all gnosis is unverified until it's shared and vetted. But it's the nomenclature in heathen communities, so we're going to work with what we got. So, from here, where do we go? Well, that's a great question. If you know who you're going to worship, and you know through what culture lens you're going to worship, it gives you a pretty good indicator of how you're going to do it, to a point. So, why? Why would you worship? This kind of gets into why you need to research the cosmology you're involved in. But long story short, the gods are in and of the world, and we exist in relationship with them, like we do with our ancestors and the spirits of the places we live and the spirits that we interact with on a daily basis, whether we understand that or not. We worship because it's right relationship between those who are part of the fabric of this reality and us who yes we are co-creating with the gods in this great tapestry that we have the word called urthr or weird w-y-r-d the old norse term is u-r-f which is a d with a little tail and a slash through it that's a th with an r at the end it's urthr it's also the name of one of the primal organizers of reality, one of the Nurnir. I'm throwing a lot at you folks. This is pretty packed for an introduction episode. So I'm going to cut it off here, and we're going to come back to this in the next video. Thanks. Hope to see you in the next one.